The special police and snake revenge begins with a ceremony presided over by the imperial prime minister and attended by the sickly-looking emperor. The prime minister explained that the ceremony was held because there were rumors of a giant dragon attacking the capital. When the prime minister explained the ceremonial procession, a male prisoner named Fei Fei was trying to escape his bondage. Then the ceremony began. All citizens gathered, and several imperial officials knelt down while touching the feet of the giant Buddha statue. During the ceremony, they looked very solemn and calm. Suddenly a terrible giant dragon appeared from behind the Buddha statue until everyone was scared. When the dragon was about to attack the emperor, one of the hands of the Buddha statue caught the giant dragon's tail. The giant dragon was angry and then attacked the giant Buddha statue until it was destroyed. Still, the giant Buddha statue could regenerate its body quickly, so it returned intact. The giant dragon was furious and then changed its tail into eight dragon heads to attack the giant Buddha statue. Suddenly the giant Buddha statue opened its eyes and annihilated the giant dragon. Seeing this, the emperor immediately prostrated himself and thanked the Buddha for saving him. The giant Buddha statue is the biggest worship of a sect called Nipue. Suddenly the imperial troops were shot by arrows, and then a group of ninjas led by a woman named Ling Yu came to attack the empire. In fact, Ling Yu was trying to wake people from the tricks of the evil prime minister in disguise. She tried to attack the emperor aiming to eliminate the influence of evil magic using her silver needle. However, the attack was blocked by a woman named Yuki who is the vice head of the Nipue sect. When the empire situation became more chaotic due to the attack of Ling Yu's troops, Fei Fei managed to escape from his bonds and attacked Ling Yu's troops. Even though Fei Fei has been a prisoner of the empire all this time, he still wants to defend the empire. But Ling Yu escaped while throwing a silver needle at Fei Fei. After Fei Fei saw the needle, he recognized the blacksmith who made it. He goes to the prime minister and asks permission to arrest Ling Yu. The prime minister allows him to chase Ling Yu because he knows Fei Fei is a great and famous kung fu expert, but he gave a condition. Before leaving, Fei Fei must drink a poison that will react within 10 days. If he fails to catch Ling Yu, he will die, but if he catches her, they will give him the antidote. Fei Fei immediately left the empire. He started his quest by meeting the best male blacksmith who he believed could make the silver needle used by Ling Yu. When Fei Fei saw it, the blacksmith was now blind but he was still able to state that it was true that a woman had paid him to make silver needles. The man could recognize a person's smell through his sense of smell, so Fei Fei took him to look for the woman. They headed for the brothel that Fei Fei suspected as Ling Yu's hideout. Fei Fei told the man to smell the female scents that were there one by one until the man found the same female scent as Ling Yu. Not long after, a female assassin came who took part in the royal competition that the prime minister was hunting for a female ninja leader. It turned out that there was also a man who followed Fei Fei to find Ling Yu. The two assassins camps fought while Fei Fei sat casually watching the fight between them. In their fight, the male assassin tried to attack Fei Fei who was sitting with a phoenix move, but he easily blocked the man's attack. Fei Fei told them to stop their fight because the woman in front of them was not Ling Yu. Ling Yu forced the woman to wear a leather mask so that her face resembled hers and then covered her body with Ling Yu's smell. The assassins immediately left the place feeling disappointed. Fei Fei asked the woman about Ling Yu's whereabouts and she gave the code with a blink of an eye to where Ling Yu was hiding. When Fei Fei discovered her hiding place, Ling Yu immediately jumped through the window and fled quickly. He chased after her but the agile Ling Yu could escape easily from Fei Fei's capture. At night, Fei Fei came to the brothel again and checked the room Ling Yu had stayed in to find something he might use as a clue to find it. While looking for clues, he came across a map leading to a secret island that the Nipue sect used as their gathering place. Fei Fei immediately went to that place until he arrived at a mysterious and strange village. The citizens there had blank stares like zombies and just stared straight ahead. In various corners of the village, there are many Buddha statues belonging to the Nipue sect in the same shape as those in the empire. Fei Fei asked one of the male residents, and he offered a reward if he would give him information. But that person ignored him and kept staring blankly ahead. Until a bell rang, the man left, followed by other residents going in the same direction. Fei Fei followed the man until he arrived at a cave, and the entire population walked into the cave. He was curious about what they would do, so he disguised himself to find out what was happening there. While in the cave, Fei Fei saw that Ling Yu was disguised among the crowd of citizens who were about to perform a ritual. He immediately approached her until the two met, and he tried to catch her. She then gave up so that they would not be the center of attention. Ling Yu explained to Fei Fei that she was from the Miao tribe. She did all this to save the emperor from the influence of magic and poison emanating from the giant Buddha statue in the kingdom. All the scattered Buddha statues of the Nipue sect were made on the island. They made the statue using poison clay. The poison can affect anyone who touches it if that person gets calm and peaceful so that the Nipue sect leader easily deceives their minds. 
Not long after, the sect leader who had been disguised as the Prime Minister appeared, revealing his real face in the cave. Fei Fei kept trying to disguise himself until he could touch one of the legs of the Buddha statue, but his vision became blurry after touching the feet of the statue. On the other hand, the sect leader realized something odd about the two people among his group of followers. Afterward, Nipue sect leader ordered his men to arrest Fei Fei and Ling Yu. Fortunately, Fei Fei could control himself and escape the illusion using the full-blooded magic he mastered. He and Ling Yu immediately ran from the cave while being chased by the members of the Nipue sect. After running for a while, they were finally cornered and decided to throw themselves into the river. The next day they both woke up, but Ling Yu sprained her leg, so Fei Fei treated her and supported her leg with wood. Meanwhile, Ling Yu saw the change in Fei Fei's body which turned blue from the poison he drank from the Prime Minister when he was about to leave. After that, she invited him to come to the Miao tribe's hideout and went through the forest warily. On the way, Ling Yu explains that the kingdom's Prime Minister is the leader of the Nipue sect named Aoki, who is in disguise. Meanwhile, the original Prime Minister had fled due to an assassination attempt that was about to be carried out on him and is currently the leader of the Miao tribe. The Nipue sect wants to rule the empire with its teachings and control the people with a giant Buddha statue made of poisonous clay that only exists on the secret island. After Ling Yu and Fei Fei had walked into the forest for a while, Yuki and her troops suddenly stopped them. Yuki whipped them with a poison whip so they were both unconscious. Just as the two of them were about to be killed by Yuki's troops, a man with a spear came and was able to defeat all of Yuki's troops. Seeing her troops all killed, Yuki immediately ran away. Long story short, Fei Fei woke up a few hours later and went outside the house to see the situation. While standing in front of the house door, he saw the residents living happily and peacefully. After that, the real Prime Minister came and invited him to eat together while telling the truth. In the past, the Prime Minister was the one who the Nipue sect leader slandered until he became a fugitive and was hunted by the Nipue sect. He had lived an abandoned life until a man from the Miao tribe helped him. In return, he organizes the lives of the Miao tribe for the better and protects them by acting as a leader. Fei Fei sat in front of the bonfire at night, feeling restless because he wanted to return to the kingdom immediately to save them from the misleading Nipue sect. But after he lived in the Miao tribe for a few days, he felt at peace there. Finally, Ling Yu took Fei Fei back to the kingdom to save the emperor and all the townspeople from the shackles of the Nipue sect's evil magic. But he refused and said why to risk his life for the city that once made him a prisoner. Hearing this, she was annoyed and decided to go alone to the kingdom. Late at night, Fei Fei was walking around in the forest of the Miao tribal village area. Suddenly, he saw Yuki and the Nipue sect troops riding horses towards Miao village. It turned out that Yuki's troops massacred all the villagers who were there. Fei Fei then fought them, but without him knowing, the leader of the Miao tribe was hit by a whip on his neck, which was fatal. Fei Fei managed to defeat all of Yuki's troops, and he even managed to kill Yuki. But the leader of the Miao tribe died from the poison of Yuki's whip. Fei Fei felt guilty for not being able to help the person who had helped him. Fei Fei decided to go to the city the following day and return for the Miao tribe leader. He will destroy the cruelty and deceit committed by the Nipue sect. Meanwhile, in the city, Ling Yu was seen disguised among the crowd of residents who were going to perform the rituals of the Nipue sect. Suddenly, Fei Fei is beside her, surprising her. On the way to the ritual place, Fei Fei told about the village of Miao, which was attacked by Yuki and her troops last night until all residents were massacred and killed the leader of the Miao tribe. As the statue worship ritual began, Ling Yu and Fei Fei disrupted the ritual using smoke bombs which they shot into the air. The imperial soldiers immediately attacked the two of them until they managed to finish off the entire army. After that, the two of them met with the prime minister. Suddenly, assassins came and gathered there to help Fei Fei and Ling Yu. The assassins also expected the city to return to normal as it was before the Nipue sect existed. The fight ensued until finally, the prime minister showed his true face who was the leader of the Nipue sect. The sect leader tried to attack them with trickery and illusions so that they saw various gigantic monsters that were about to attack them. When Fei Fei was about to be attacked by one of the monsters, he dared to remain silent. Instantly the giant punch pierced his body and didn't touch him so he concluded that all they were showing was an illusion. After fighting for some time, Fei Fei finally caught the sect leader. But before he made him a prisoner, he asked the sect leader of the Nipue sect for an antidote to distribute to all the citizens. The next day, people's lives returned to normal after drinking the antidote. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, that between good and bad, sometimes it seems vague. Before determining who is good and evil, we must find out the truth ourselves.